Hey, 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 welcome to Studio Classroom on the air. Your English will improve today. My name is Gabe, and I like secondhand books. If I'm out shopping with my wife or friends, I might get bored with clothing stores. And there's not much else besides clothes that I need to shop for. But if I see a secondhand bookstore, chances are I will spend a lot of time inside browsing the shelves. And if you're like me, then you'd like today's lesson. The world's coolest bookstores. One of the bookstores in our lesson is in Venice, Italy. So here's a fun little quiz for you while your magazine is still closed. Which of these bookstores is in Venice? A book garden, a library on the water, a cave of books, or an outdoor bookstore? All right, open up your magazine and see if you guessed correctly. Let's begin. The world's coolest bookstores. Book Garden. The world's biggest bookstore is Tehran Iran's Book Garden, with 700,000 square feet of space. In addition to restaurants and a theater, the Book Garden features a park on the roof. Libreria Aqua Alta. Venice, Italy is a city surrounded by water. It seems only right then that one of its most interesting bookstores is Libreria Aqua Alta. Its books are displayed in all things related to water, such as boats, bathtubs, and more. Okay, we're going to go to five different places around the world right now. Or four, I should say. Four places. The first one is in Iran. It's called Book Garden, or uh, Tehran, Iran's Book Garden. It's the world's biggest bookstore with 700,000 square feet of space. And um, how would you like to, <laughs> Rebecca, how would you like to walk all the way through this bookstore, 700,000 square feet. Mm, I can only imagine that I would get a lot of steps in. Yeah. You know, when you carry your phone around, it records how many steps you take a day, and you're supposed to take maybe 10,000 steps a day. Well, if I were to walk around this entire bookstore, guess what? I probably would get my 10,000 steps in just walking around. Oh, yeah, very quickly. Okay, well, <laughs> in addition to restaurants and a theater, the book garden features a park on the roof. And you can look this up online, friends. It's kind of, it's huge, first of all. That's very true. And you can see kind of where the park is on the roof. It would be cool to go to a bookstore that had a theater as well. You could kind of finish reading your book and take a break and go watch a movie. Yes, wouldn't that be fun? You could do it all right at the same place. And then when you're tired of watching a movie, or if the movie's over, you can go visit the garden on the roof. Yeah, or the, the park, right? The park on oh, the roof. Oh, excuse me. The park on the roof. Or go to one of the restaurants, the many restaurants that are inside. Well, let's go to another part of the world in Europe. And this place is called Librilia Aqua Alta. And I believe that translates to library water on top. So mm. the library on the water. This is actually a very interesting bookstore. I did watch a YouTube video of it, and guess what? This bookstore is really surrounded by water. It's found in Venice, Italy, and it, the, the bookstore itself floats on water. And it seems only right, then, that one of its most interesting bookstores is this place called Liberia Aqua Alta. Now, before we continue, there's a phrase that we think is kind of useful, seems only right, or we could even say it only seems right that something. It's fun. It's, you use this when describing how something is right or suitable for a certain situation. For example, tomorrow is my sister's graduation, and it seems only fair that we take her out for dinner since we had taken her brother out for dinner on his graduation day. Okay, that's a great example. So you took 
uh, the brother out for dinner. Mm -hmm. So it's fair if you take her out as well. You would say it seems only fair. It only seems fair. That's a great example. And as you noticed, Rebecca used a different adjective. Friends, think of another adjective that you could use with this phrase. But our lesson says it seems only right that one of its most interesting bookstores is Libreria Aqua Alta. So, of course, it seems right that this famous bookstore is also on the water and that it's got water in its name. Very, very cool. Well, we read its books are displayed in all things related to water, such as boats, bathtubs, and more. So that is, in addition to boats and bathtubs, you will find books displayed in other things as long as they're related to water. You know, I saw that video that you sent me, Rebecca, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, host of the video was saying that there were even sinks. So basically anything that is related to water, right? You see this boat with lots of books in it, a vaporetto, a bathtub, different things, all things related to water. And that's another phrase we want to talk about, all things related. That means everything that has to do with something. For example, I took an English class many years ago in all things related to the history of England. So this specific English class was all about England and the history of England, the kings and the queens. It was actually rather interesting. And Rebecca just used an example also with the word to, just like our lesson says, all things related to England. Mm -hmm. I took a Shakespeare class when I was in university, and so, of course, we studied things that were related to Shakespeare Everything was about Shakespeare and all things related. Now, I didn't have to use the word to there because I already said what the topic was mm -hmm. earlier in the sentence. We studied about Shakespeare and all things related. So there are different ways you could use that phrase. That's right. Now, of course, in today's lesson, we are talking about books. And, of course, books have pages. Gabe, have you ever taken a page from someone else's book? Oh, that's not very nice. Sometimes my toddler son likes to rip the pages out of my books. Oh, really? That's definitely not nice. Well, we have more to learn about this phrase in the InfoCloud. Info Welcome to InfoCloud, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about books. I love reading books, both for entertainment and learning. I am also a big fan of books. And I like the way we can use the idea of a book being a source of knowledge to give credit to someone else. Oh, the expression, borrowing a page from someone else's book. You're right, Rex. That is a great way to credit someone else for a way that you do something. I always appreciate the way that Joe uses his free time to study. So today, I'm going to borrow a page from Joe's book and do some studying on the train. Thanks for the compliment, Rex. We also can take a page. I'm going to take a page from Rex's book and find meaningful ways to compliment my coworkers. I think that here we should also talk about what people mean when they say, in my book. That's a way to express something according to your opinion or way of doing things or just a code of ethics. In my book, if you can't say something nice, it's better to say nothing at all. This is another great way to approach daily life. I might take that page from Rex's book too. Okay, let's see how my Italian and French are today. Welcome back to Studio Classroom, by the way. We have been learning about different cool bookstores around the world talked about one in Iran called the Book Garden and one in Italy on the water that had a lot of uh, books in bathtubs and boats and things like that. Let's see if I can get this right. Libreria Aqua Alta. Okay, and next we're going to learn about one with a French title, La Caverne au Liver Livre. Ah, whatever. We are learning English after all. Let's continue with our cool bookstores. The world's coolest bookstores. La Caverne Olive. La Caverne Olive, the cave of books, 
was once a train. Today, this unique French bookstore, located north of Paris, is home to thousands of secondhand books. Bart's Books. Many readers like to curl up inside with a good book. But at Bart's Books in California, guests can enjoy a good book and some fresh air. Bart's is believed to be the largest independently owned outdoor bookstore in the U.S. Whether you enjoy reading inside or outside, there's always an interesting bookstore to be discovered. And let's go to France now, a place that I've never been. Um, okay, I would love to go, and I'd love to go check this place out too. Let's see if I can get it right this time. La Caverne au Livre, the Cave of Books, was once a train. Well, it was once a train. That word once could mean different things. In our lesson, it means that it used to be a train. Exactly. Here's another way that you can use this word once. Down in Taichung, there is this ice cream shop. Actually, I love this ice cream shop. It actually was once a bank. Yes, I have been there as well. There are so many different flavors of ice cream, but the coolest part is that it was once a bank. And there's another part of that building that they've redecorated as well. Maybe you know about it as well, friends. If you've been to Taizong downtown Taizong, it was once. So, friends, of course, we don't mean that it was only one time. We mean that it used to be a bank, right? And just in our lesson, the same way, this bookstore was once a train. So, on the outside, it looks like a train, but on the inside, perhaps it feels like you're walking into a cave, and maybe that's why they call it a cave of books.、Mm, good thought. Today, this unique French bookstore, located north of Paris, is home to thousands of secondhand books. I actually really like secondhand books. Do you know why? Why is that? Well, because they were owned by someone else before, and sometimes people leave marks in the books. Oh yeah. And then I usually、uh, am drawn to those areas because they're usually really important. Yeah, and they're they're interesting. It's interesting to read what other people thought as、right. they wrote as they read those books.、Um, I was sharing earlier that I like secondhand books as well. I think one of the reasons is. Because they're cheaper than buying, you know, brand new books. <laughs> But I like Rebecca's reason better. <laughs> It's fun to have something secondhand for the reason that she just said. Okay, so I just said the, those really difficult names in Italian and French. Rebecca, please take it away. Tell us the most difficult name ever in this next section. Bart's books. Good job. Well done, Bart's books. Many readers like to curl up inside with a good book, but at Bart's Books in California, guests can enjoy a good book and some fresh air. Hey, I really like those two word, words, curl up. Do you know who really likes to curl up in my house?、Um, let me guess. It's the creature that you talk about all the time. Oh yes, of course, Mittens,、yes. my little kitty cat. She loves to curl up. Without a book, right? But I'm sure that you like to curl up sometimes with a book, right? That's right. That means you're getting comfortable. And we read here: Bart's is believed to be the largest independently owned outdoor bookstore in the U.S. Believed to be. This is a good phrase for you to know. It's used to describe something that many people believe. Right. For example. Water is believed to be the best liquid to drink when you are. Thirsty. Yeah. Some people like to try to drink soda or tea, but actually, water is the best. A lot of people believe so. And that is a great example. Bart's is believed to be the largest independently owned outdoor bookstore in the U- outdoor bookstore <laughs> in the U.S. And we finish our lesson here. Whether you enjoy reading outside, inside or outside, there's always an interesting bookstore to be discovered. So. Walk around your neighborhood or your city or somewhere else and see if you can discover a bookstore. Well, right now it's time for us to discover a review skit. Oh yeah. Psst, psst. Hey, where did you buy your last book? On the internet. 
It's so convenient. Well, yeah, but you missed the remarkable experience of browsing in a real bookstore. Remarkable experience? Yeah, there are some amazing bookstores around the world. Around the world? For example, the Asleep Bookstore in Taipei. It spreads across five floors. Five floors? That's wow! That's right, five floors. <laughs> It offers a combination of restaurants, music, and over two hundred and thirty thousand books. That's like a library. It has a cozy reading spot too. Oh, and it's open twenty-four hours a day. Wow, just like Seven <laughs> Eleven. So, what's another great bookstore? Well, Rio de Janeiro has a famous bookstore. It may be the world's most colorful. How's that? The upper level is lined with books arranged by colors. Oh, oh, and a rainbow path leads into the children's section. I'd love to see that. So, what's the world's biggest bookstore? Iran's Book Garden. It's got seven hundred thousand square feet of space. That's huge. Yeah, it has restaurants, a theater, and features a park on the roof. That sounds lovely. <laughs> yeah, it is. Let's see. It's very, very lovely. Oh, so tell me, what do you know about Venice, Italy? Well, it's a city surrounded by water. That's correct. And it has a very interesting bookstore. It's called Libiera Aqua Alta, and its books are displayed around boats and bathtubs and other things related to water. How creative! And very. The north of France has a unique bookstore too. It's a cave full of books, and it once was a train. A train? Yeah, that's right. Now it's home to thousands of secondhand books. That's remarkable. When you need fresh air, visit Bart's Books. <laughs> It's one of the larger outdoor bookstores in the U.S. I love the outdoors. Hmm, I should visit some cool bookstores. You really should. Say, how do you know so much about bookstores around the world? <laughs> I'm from the travel section in the library. Oh. <laughs> Well, isn't that cute? A talking book from the travel section. Okay, of all the bookstores that we talked about today, which one interests you most, friends? For me, I would really like to check out that floating bookstore in Venice, Italy, the bookstore on the water. What about you? Well, next time we have something completely different. We're going to be learning about robot dexterity right here on Studio Classroom. We'll see you then.